Hi everybody and welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. Before I get started today I want to welcome all my new subscribers and I want to thank all you guys who watch my Q&As faithfully. Now we're quite into the mowing season at this time of the year in Canada, however I've been asked the other day how should I put away my snowblower? Well my answer to that is to make sure that you do not have any old gas left in it. What I do is I drain the carburetor. You can also run it till it's completely drained or just suck it out of the gas tank or drain it from underneath the tank. However, I do have a video that shows how to do all these procedures. The link is under the video today. Just click on it and you can see how I put away my snowblower for the summertime. The first question I'll be answering today is in regards to oil filters on lawn tractors. Somebody asked me the other day, will your engine last longer if you have a filter like this on your lawn tractor engine? Well, my answer to that is yes and no. It depends on how you maintain your equipment to start with. However, I would say that it is better to have an oil filter on your engine. But even if you have a filter, you should be changing the oil regularly. If your tractor happens to not have an oil filter like this, then you may want to change the oil more often. Maybe to answer the question a bit clearly, I don't think it's going to make the engine last any longer if you do have an oil filter, although it is much better for it. What I do think makes an engine last longer is if you have a pressurized oil pump or system in your engine. That makes sure that the oil gets all over the engine, unlike just having the connecting rod dipping in the oil. So again, my advice for today is change your oil regularly. It's the best and cheapest preventive maintenance you can do to your engine. Another question I had the other day is, how do I remove a seized lawn tractor wheel? Well, the best thing to do is take the pressure out of the tire and then with an oxyacetylene torch, you want to heat up the center of the wheel hub. By the way, guys, make sure that the bolt is completely off. And then you'd want to heat up the inside of the wheel hub over here. This whole part here, which is on the drive shaft, needs to be heated very hot. If you don't heat it, it's going to be pretty near impossible to get it off. And then what I use is a harmonic balancer puller. I put bolts in here with the nut at the other end, and then I pull it out. And after working so hard to remove a wheel, you should use some kind of anti-seize to spray on the wheel hub and the drive shaft. This way here, if you need to remove the wheel again, it's going to be a lot easier to get off. I've actually filmed the removal process of this wheel here that was seized. I'm actually editing the video right now. As soon as it's edited, you're going to see uploaded on my channel. Now another question I often get is, what kind of oil should I use in my lawnmower? Well, what I can recommend that you use in your lawnmower is either 10W30 or SAE30 oil. The SAE30 oil is a nice thick oil, that's usually what they first recommend. However, some lawnmowers actually recommend 10W30. Just to make sure, double check with the manufacturer of your lawnmower engine to see what they recommend. Now another question I got from a YouTuber the other day is, can I leave the bar oil in my saw for a prolonged period of time? Well, my answer to that is yes. I've left bar oil in chainsaws for up to two years. However, if you're not going to be using this saw for at least a year or two, I would recommend to empty it out. I've noticed sometimes, depending on the brand of oil you use, it can get a bit thick in there and stick to the walls inside the oil tank. I've also noticed sometimes if you store a saw with the oil in it, Sometimes, for some mysterious reasons, the oil can leak out of the saw and be all over the place. I've gotten in the habit now of emptying my saws of all the bar oil if I won't be using them for at least two months. That way, if the oil does leak out, I will avoid a big mess. Now, if you're using old black engine oil in your chainsaws, I highly recommend that you empty it out because it does seem to affect the seals, the rubber hose, and different parts in the saw. Another tip I want to share with you guys today is if you overfill your lawnmower with oil as this one is, on this one here it's approximately one inch above the serrated area where the oil should be, this in turn can cause your lawnmower to be hydrolocked. Meaning that when you go to pull it, you're not going to be able to do that because it's going to be seized up from all the oil going into the cylinder area. This is what the problem is with this one. And by the way, guys, I do have a video in my collection that shows me how to take care of a lawnmower that is hydrolocked. The link is under the video. You can go watch it. If you have this problem, it's easy to solve. You just take the plug out, turn it over. All the oil is going to come out. And then you'd want to make sure to empty out the excess oil from the crankcase. Now, this one here has so much oil that when I take the plug out, it's just going to leak out. Now that's excessive. I got a question from a YouTuber the other day. He says he has a steel FS38 trimmer. He's put in a new carburetor. He's unplugged the spark arrestor screen on the muffler. 
He's put in a new spark plug and it still won't start. Obviously he's a bit frustrated and he's wondering what's going on. Well I've got the exact trimmer here on my table. Now this procedure will apply to any other trimmer regardless of the brand. In the guy's case what he might want to do is remove the muffler. There's two Torx 27 screws holding it on. First you'd have to remove the plastic shroud here. You would want to look through the muffler and make sure that your piston and rings are not scored like this. If they are scored it will never start. Another thing that will prevent your equipment from starting is if you flooded it. If you think you flooded it, make sure the choke is off, then hold the throttle wide open and pull it over until it starts. What this will do is allow more air to go through the carburetor and burn up the excess fuel that's in the crankcase. Another thing is make sure that the air filter is not plugged because that will flood the engine as well. Now these are just a few things to check if your unit won't start. There could always be other major problems as well. Another question I often get about lawn tractors is why am I going through a lot of deck belts? Some people tell me I've just replaced the deck belt on my lawn tractor and it didn't take long before it was all worn out again. Well some issues that could be causing this is a worn out pulley on the engine. It's this big pulley over here that drives the deck. There's also an upper pulley that drives the drive on the tractor. But what I'm more concerned about is this pulley at the bottom here getting worn out. If it gets worn out what happens is the belt slips on it and if the belt keeps slipping on the pulley it's going to get worn out much faster. I've noticed that often people do not think that the pulley on the engine could be causing this problem. It can because what happens is it becomes concave in here. It's not totally on an angle like it should be. That's why the belt is slipping especially under load. You pretty well have to feel it with your finger to see if it's worn out or not. And when you replace this pulley, usually it comes with the pulley for the drive as well. Another problem that may be causing your deck belt to be worn out prematurely is if you don't clean the deck after you're done using it. Sometimes what happens is the deck is so full of grass that the blades can't even turn. If that's the case, then the belt will not be able to turn with the engine. It's just going to be slipping on the pulley and burning itself out. So what I recommend is that you clean the deck after every use, especially if the grass you just cut was wet. If it's wet, it's really going to stick on that deck. Another question I often get from people is, how do I permanently fix a flat tire on a lawn tractor? What I recommend to do when you have a flat tire is just install a tube in that wheel. It's going to be a permanent fix and you're not going to have to worry about it being flat each time you use your tractor. Also what I can recommend is if you have a hard time getting the tire off, just take it to a tire shop they may have tubes there or buy a tube and take it to a tire shop and get them to put it in. Some of these little wheels can be very frustrating to install a tube and sometimes you can inadvertently poke a hole through the tube and then you got to start all over again. Whereas if the shop puts a hole in your tube they're just going to replace the tube at no charge. So this will wrap it up for today's Q&A guys. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter and Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram you're going to see a lot of pictures from my daily work in my shop here. You can even comment on the pictures as well. And you might even learn something from looking at the pictures. Thanks again guys and have yourselves a great weekend.